Good morning, you roadside scallop. Okay. I, I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief backstory of what's happening over the past eight days. And then we're going to go to focusing back onto content because I've had some crazy epiphanies. One of them being, I've realized that I'm actually what's called a cold creator. All right, so we'll get into that. Um, so what's happened over the past eight days? I don't want to go too into detail and I really don't want, I don't want to tell this in a way that number one is too invasive of like me and my family's personal space. And number two, the point that like I'm a victim, right? Not me, but like this situation makes me and my family a victim. So I don't want to do that. Let's switch to noise cancellation. See if that works. Okay, it does work. Also, the clip that you'll see after this was me doing like an unboxing with my son. I'll get into that as well. <laughs> um, so, okay, high level. Wednesday of last week, it's like 11 o'clock and we're realizing that my wife's going into labor. And so we were having an at-home birth and by six o'clock in the morning, we had the baby. But then there were some complications with his breathing and we had to take rush him to the ER or to the ICU, to the NICU, where he's been for the past eight days. It's been a roller coaster of up and downs. But I think for the most part, like I wouldn't be making videos again if he wasn't in a good place. So he's in a much better place now. But in terms, yeah, just emotionally, I think the thing that has been so difficult is when something good happens, you, you want to feel very positive. You want to feel very good. But you also know that there's still so far ahead of you and you can't get yourself feeling too good because like what happens if things go badly? Like, so you don't want to set your expectations too high. It's like you feel amazing, you feel so good, you feel like the best thing in the world because you've gotten this good news, but there's still so far to go and you just, you don't, I don't know how to process it properly. And so you end up in this like mixed emotions place. But I'll tell you one thing that was incredibly surprising. This might be an overshare, but I think it's an interesting share. I've always found that I haven't been, my highs are never too high, like emotionally speaking, my highs are never too high, my lows are never too low. I haven't cried in like a decade maybe, friggin' macho man. But when I, when I got to the hospital after dropping Ruger off with some family, he'd, like our other, our, new son had been there for like six hours or so and I go in and I see him like covered in tubing, breathing apparatus, apparatus, whatever you pronounce it. And I, I don't know what came over me, but it happened on two occasions. The first two times that I walked into the room, I just got crazy hot, immediate sweats, and I felt like I was about to pass out. I don't know what that is. Is that I haven't looked it up, but is that a panic attack? Um, is that... I don't know what. It might also have been part of the fact that I'd drunk a monster and a Celsius because I just had to drive like four hours to go and drop Ruger off there and back. So that I'm sure that played a part of it because I really don't like drinking energy drinks. But even so, something like that really shocked me. Well, I don't know if shocked is the right word because I obviously wouldn't know how to handle the situation. But we're at a, a decent point now where he's stable and he has been stable for a few days. But dealing with that emotionally has just been a wild ride. And I, tr I truly hope that no other person, I wish that no other parent would have to deal with that. Now, I'd be lying if I said that Shay and I, like Shay, Shay did so much in her pregnancy to be 
for this to have the best outcome. I'm talking like exercising all the time, sleep schedule, eating properly, taking care of herself, doing what she needs to for the baby, um, got the home birth that she wanted, and this still happens. And then you look at someone who does drugs or drinks alcohol or doesn't eat properly or doesn't take care of themselves during their pregnancy, and they come out with a baby that's absolutely fine. I mean, I'm so glad for that baby that it is fine, but it's hard not to look at that and think, how is that fair? Like, I'm not a man of faith. My wife is. And, like, I obviously have asked, well, not obviously, but I've asked her, how does she process something like this? Like, how does, how does your greater being allow something like this to happen? And her view on it is, which is, um, I'm criticizing it from purely my point of view. And she can have her point of view on it. That's, this is what I wanted was to understand how she processed this. And it was almost like a test. He's testing if you have faith in him that he will bring your child through. Now, me personally, I feel like that's a very manipulative. I would never, I just feel like that's a very manipulative way of doing things. And so if, if that's the, if I were to have that same belief that Shay has on how this comes around, I would be thinking, why would he test, why would he test my faith? and put my child in this sort of misery and danger. And I can make this child have to work so much to get through this. Right? I don't know, that, that doesn't... I can have my opinion, and it doesn't mean that, you know, if you have your faith, it doesn't mean God is manipulative, right? Like, I'm not just saying that outright. I'm saying that the way my wife processes it, I would look at that and say it's manipulative. Not of my wife, but you get it. Um, so, what's going on with this situation right now? Ruger has been with family, they've been looking after him, which has been fantastic. But now it's at a point where we would like to have Ruger back, and Shay and I would like to be able to spend time with Ruger in between being at the hospital. So over the next few weeks, I'm mostly going to be taking care of Ruger and then I'll, you know, split the time with Shay and come up and see her and then we can switch over. So I'll look after the new baby and Shay will look after Ruger. The new baby's name, by the way, is Covey. C-O-V-E-Y. So if I refer to, if I say Covey, you know what I'm talking about. But what that means is like, I need to, I still need to work. Like I'm not in a place where I can just not work for a few weeks. And, but I still need to look after Ruger. And so I've decided, like I've really been thinking, not like, it's kind of just come to me as I've been thinking about it in between times. I don't know how, how else to explain this. Like what I mean is, what I do, so that this, what does actually work for me, but is actually a hobby that I enjoy doing, which also happens to pay the bills. I'm not thinking about that the whole time when I'm, you know, looking at my son covered in tubes, wondering if he's going to make it the next hour. Which, unfortunately, at times it has been that. Like my wife and I haven't been thinking any further than the next hour in front of us. But. I'm going to be involving Ruger in a few videos, and when I say involving, the videos are basically going to be doing something fun with him. But I will be blurring out his face, which is going to take a lot of time to edit, but I will be blurring out his face. Um, and I hope those videos are fun. I hope 
they are enjoyable. We got some cool ideas. Um, I have a lot of thoughts written down, but I'm going to park, go in, get settled. And once I'm in a good place, I'll stick this back up. But the next clip you're going to see is of, excuse me, Rugi and I unboxing the DJI Mic 2 and giving it a quick test. I, it was quite fun. I enjoyed that. So, and I hope you enjoy that. All right, let's see. Compact cars only. All right, Rugi loves opening packages and he loves microphones. Do you want a microphone on? Okay, you can put it on your chest here. Wow, look at yourself in there. Look at yourself in there. Do you see it on your chest? Wow. All right, come with me. We need something to open this. Wait, leave it on. Yeah, I've got one on and you leave yours on. Dad. Yeah, I've got one on too. Yeah. Okay, come with me. This way, come here. Come here, quick, this way. What's my line? I wrote this one down. I actually used ChatGPT to make a more concise version of what I wrote. Ruga, leave that. Leave it. Yeah, leave that there. We don't need to touch that. Um, all right, come with me. What do we need to open the box? The what? Hey, Ruga, no. what do we need? No. A knife? Okay. Here we go. Um, where is the knife? Where is the knife? Oh, let me. Is it in the dishwasher? Where on earth is it? What the heck, dude? No, leave that there, Reese. Leave it on you. Where's the knife? Where is the knife? I guess we'll just use we'll use this one. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Ready? Yeah. That. Yeah. Open the package. All right, Rugi. If you're half British, you learn need to learn how to use one of these. Damn it, messed up. All right, just come back and do it again. Silly daddy. Yeah. All right. Right, Ruga, being half British, you need to learn how to use one of these. Okay, ready? Nice. Other side. Oh, are we going to do it? We can't do it. Nice. Okay, and then one down the middle. Okay, you can do a job. All right, let's go put the knife back. <sighs> yeah. All right, let's put the knife back. Dad. Yeah, and leave it in there. We're going to come back for it. Ah. Yeah, sharp. Dad. All right, put it up there. <laughs> nice. All right, let's go open it. You know, I don't love buying like a new version just because there's a new version of something. So this is the original DJI mic. It's what we're using now. But this is the mic too, and I thought, <laughs> what are you doing with it? Do you want to keep it on? I'll uh, put it. Do you want me? To, do you want some help? Yes. Okay. All right. Look. So we do this. You got pinch like that. See? Nice. And then on there. Good job. Hey. Should we open it? Mom. Yeah, I don't love just buying the next version up, but this one has a couple of features that I think are really good. And I bought them because I thought they'd be really good for the YouTube pod vlogs. Just a better audio experience for you. Has noise cancellation, so we're gonna give that a try. All right, you wanna open it? You wanna pull that out? Nice! Oh what is it? Can you open it? Good job. Oh, then keep trying. All right, pull down. Nice, Rugi. Keep pulling it. Keep pull. Keep pull. 
Keep going, keep going, keep going. Nice. And then down this side, pull again. Dude, nice job. Right, what's in there? Oh, whoa. <laughs> what is that? Can you open this one? What's in here? What is it? Can you... Oh, pull that. Pull the yellow label. There, pull this bit. Get your nail under it. Good job. Keep trying. Keep trying. You had it. Get your nail under there. Good job. Well done. Give that to Dad. Thank you, Ruger. Oh, it looks like a button to push. You need to push this button. Can you push it? Push here. Push again. Nice, Ruga. What's that? Should we try it on your trampoline? Should we give it a go on your trampoline? See how the noise cancellation works? Yeah? <coughs> thrilled, absolutely thrilled. All right, let's switch over the mics and then we'll give the yeah, noise cancellation a go on the bouncy house. Uh, the right date. That's not the right time, but I don't care. Okay, all right, I'll show you this quickly. So, wait, don't touch it, Rooks. So it has a little dial to go through the settings. And then each of these have, wait, don't touch that, Rooks. Have like a noise cancellation button here. Yeah, all right, let go. Let's switch over now. Okay, you gonna put this on? Good job. Stay there. Very nice. Wait, leave it there. Oh, that's not going to work. Okay, you got to leave it on, okay? Oh. Wait, yeah, leave it on you. Nice. Should we go try the back? Oh, I need to put mine on. All right, let me put it back on you. Nice. I'm so, I know this feels super weird. Sorry for you. Yeah, I got mine on. Should we? Go, should we? You've got one too. Hey, Rugi, where is your microphone? No, where's your microphone? Yeah, that's right. What do you say? Is it here? Yeah. All right. Let's go on the bouncy house, shall we? Yeah, we don't need those. But you've got some other cables and crap. But... Where's the bouncy house? <gasps> I don't know what noise you're making for the... He's got the dead cats. So like the wind mufflers that stick on top. <laughs> He's making funny. Why are you making funny noises for those? <gasps> Ruga. Should we go try the bouncy house with the doggies? Yes. All right, let's go, Rugs, this way. Hi, dude. Uh, Rugi. Ruga. This is, uh, this is gonna be a challenging couple of weeks, but I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun to do these things. Let's go. If I can get him to not focus on the camera or like the microphones and stuff, then we can make it happen easily. We can just pretend like it's all normal. So I think I just need to hide the camera in places that he's not going to notice it. Rugi, let's go. I'm going to go on the bouncy house. Yeah, do you want to come with me? All right, leave that there, please.
Daddy. Yeah, that's mine. Daddy. Can you leave it there, please? <laughs> yeah, just leave it there. Daddy. Or I'll, I'll, I'll just bring it with you. <laughs> Let's go, Rooks. All right, I'm going to start off. Oh, let me switch to a tripod. All right. Come over here. What are you doing, Duda? You want to turn it on? Oh, is that one? <gasps> Get out of here, Boobas! Get out of here! Get out of here! Go on, Riggy. Do that. Alright, for your guys' sake, I've got the noise cancellation on now, but we're gonna do a test. Alright, jump up. Go on, Duda. Get up there, Duda. Relax, Duda. Jump. Where are you going? Go down the slide. Can you go down the slide? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Dude, you're going to destroy everything. Is that Ruga? Oh, thank you. Do you want to go down the slide? No, that's the wrong, Ruby, that's the wrong slide. Okay, well, he's going to do his thing. Okay. So now I'm going to test. Come on. I'm going to turn this one off. Okay, that one's off. It's quite cool, you can see a monitor on the bit that goes on the camera, the receiver. Right. Let's put this on. Okay, watch out, Duda. Alright, so I think we, we are noise cancellation on at the moment. What do you think? Noise cancellation off. Duda, come here. Rugi, don't touch, please. Do you want to go down the slide? Dude, <laughs> you're mental. All right, you. Oh my gosh. Ready? <laughs> no, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here! Alright, you go down the slide. Get up there, Duda. Duda, hop! No, get up there. Get up there. Do you want it back? No. 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 What? No. Do you want it? Alright, he's being far too difficult. So this is noise cancellation off. And this is noise cancellation on. I have no idea if it's, it's good or not. Yeah, that's mine. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah, you... You think that's what do you what have you got, Duda? I'll listen to this later and see if it sounds better. So Oliver, what do you think? Bit of a donut really, so I didn't have on the feature that allows it to not clip, which means it captures all the sound really well. It's called 32-bit float. I turned that on last night and hopefully you'll see that in the next video. Also it does link via Bluetooth to any Bluetooth device.
Cool. Get, get off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. Did I hit your head? Hey, I'm sorry. Oh, and now you're fine. <laughs> you. Oh no, not in your mouth. Out. Ew, sicko. Sicko. <laughs> You know, I think I'm actually quite a cheap person as it goes. And I don't like upgrading stuff just for the sake of upgrading. But like in this case, I think it's a small price to pay to make the viewing experience better for the people who watch the YouTube videos. And it doesn't, it doesn't really change anything for me. No, no, no. Oh, gosh. This next week or two of videos with him is going to be difficult, <laughs> but fun. I'm not really sure this is how this is going to go because I've got a really tickly throat for some reason. But the reason why you're not seeing any video right now is because I am dead tired. I'm taking the dogs out for a walk and I need to edit something before I go to bed. And so I thought I do owe you the conversation about um, what the heck was it now? Warm versus cold creators, because it's an epiphany to me. Um, but I obviously can't record myself. And I don't want to prioritize taking the time to record myself versus, you know, killing two birds at one stone. Now, now that we've gotten that ridiculous explanation out of the way, warm versus cold creator. So this whole time I started creating storytelling style content because I thought it was a great way for people to get to know who you are a bit better, to build more of a community. It was like, I really want storytelling. And I went so far down this rabbit hole of storytelling that I ended up creating these like mini, go on, mini, oh, sounds kind of pathetic, mini movies that were not, it was not, I mean, it was me, but it was a entertainment side of me. It was like me if I was to be an entertainer. <clears throat> and it got me thinking. So that, and then, like, let's give you some other examples. Someone who plays a character. Uh, so I'm just trying to think of anyone in particular. Like, like people play funny characters. Um, like, uh, let's say, I don't know, Italian Bach, 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 whatever you, how you pronounce his name. He does like comedy sketches. And so he's playing a different character in each of those. So he is also what you would call a, as far as my understanding goes, a cold creator. Because no one actually sees the full real you. Whereas a warm creator is someone who is just um, sharing so much and it's not necessarily designed to be entertaining or designed to retain people's attention. It's just that, it's just you. I, I think if we look at some examples that are meant to be of that, you'd have like, you know, the live stream was Jinxy, Kai Sinat and I Show Speed. Like, they're just, like, crazy high-energy people, aren't they? So they're very entertaining to watch. And they can just, like, let's say that is the real them. They can just be that. And that is enough to garner huge amounts of attention and for people to be very interested. Whereas, let's say someone like me, I'm nowhere near that entertaining. Like, in, like, in this... <laughs> gosh. In, this, in the same way, but I am in other ways. <laughs> um... Like, let's say people could find a lot of value in the way I think about things or my experiences of short form and social media, how I think about them that way, um, what I think works on social media. Um, and people who like the, this, this chilled approach. So anyway, 
there you have the differences between a cold and a warm creator. Also, I'm recording on both the original DJI mic and the mic 2, because I'm not sure if the settings are set up for the recording straight to the transceiver for the DJI mic 2, because I, I remember, I'm pretty sure I had to make some changes to the original DJI mic to get it to actually sound half decent, or like to actually be able to pick up the audio. Oh yeah, also, do you think it's wrong, so like right now, it's Thursday night, trash night, so why not, trash day tomorrow, do you think it's right to put a poop bag in someone's bin that's going to get picked up tomorrow? I don't know if I would be annoyed that I saw someone do that, I'd be like, oh, I mean that makes sense, like it's about to get taken out. I wonder if it would be any different if it was like at the beginning of the week, but at the same time, why would that make any difference whatsoever? Like, you're only going to put trash in there on top of that and it doesn't matter, it's just going to go out again a week later. How about that for a side quest on my conversation? Um, yeah, so, so that pretty well explains, like, because I've been this cold creator and, like, not realising it, uh, that is why I haven't really been able to build much of a community because I'm not showing the real me. Like I'm cutting out the... Like I thought by having the bad bits that happened to me in the videos, I thought that was more real. But it's not, isn't it? Because I'm still cutting out so much stuff and I'm making up parts of it to fit the story. Now, don't... i got to... I have another thought on that, of like, I don't, that doesn't mean I have to abandon my content that I, like that style of content, it means that I now have that in my armory, like I know how to do that, like if I need to, if I want to try different styles, I can. So then, the, the way I'm thinking is, imagine, these pod vlogs are just raw, like nothing about them is designed for entertainment in terms of retaining your attention. It's just like, if you're interested, you're interested. If not, that's cool. Which I much prefer, but the problem is, I do think there's a happy medium. We've talked before about how much I hate doing the hooks on TikTok videos, but I do think they're a necessary evil and it depends Depends how you do that hook. I think with something compelling, I, I you know I still I still do dislike that style of hook, which is I did this, so I'm blah blah blah, because then it feels like content. I'd rather have you know a, a story as if you tell your friend, or like you know a thought that I have, like for example, the. Um, like opening the DJI mic and stuff, like I, I planned, not really planned, but I thought that that section could be really good for its own TikTok. Like, because you've got the part of the story in there that I've, I've got this original mic, and I've been umming, like I haven't been sure whether I want to upgrade or not, because I don't know if I want to spend the money, but actually I've come to a realization that there's not that much of an impact for me if I can make the viewing experience better for you. So that is the reason that I decided to make the purchase that I wouldn't normally have. Right, so there is a story in there. And I feel that by, by not planning these things out, just shooting it, and then based on like what I know about storytelling, try and push into the things that happen. So like sharing my feelings, if something, if something went badly, how did that make me, <laughs> how did that make me feel? Yeah, well, but basically how did that make me feel? How did that impact me? And I, I want to go onto this, like given that the whole reason I want to do these types of videos 
is because I wanted to be able to do fun things and make a video out of it. Um, I should be doing these things regardless of if it's going to come out looking good. Like as a, you know, how can I craft the story out of that for a TikTok? Especially when I'm not like trying to, I guess, move away from doing voiceovers. Because like you can so easily save it and then doing a voiceover is like... Part of me wants to say easy. Another part of me wants to be like, it is less real because you're thinking after the fact. But that, that's a stupid reason, isn't it? Because that doesn't mean that a piece of content is then, that doesn't mean that it's less raw or authentic, whatever word you want to use. I feel like those two are just synonymous now at this point. Um, but it's, I think also doing it this way, and we'll see how it goes with the next few videos coming up. Like all the fun ones I want to do with Rugi. Because I'm not going to have time to edit. I'm going to try and, you know, just be as raw as I can and then just use editing to cut up the clips that I have. Like, you know, take out the boring stuff that I know won't work on a short form platform and just see where we go. The learning experience. And then the other thing, I spent all this time making the same style of content, making one style of content because I was like, oh, that's what, that's what I need to do so that people know exactly what they, what to expect from me. And I need to do that so that if I'm pitching to brands, they can see examples of like, that's what I do. I'm not just making a random video. Like I actually have a formula to this. And I'm like, now I'm thinking, dude, just like open up. Like what's, what's wrong with trying things? Give it a go. So that's where we're going to be. Cool. Uh, I did have, uh, yeah, oh yeah, that's right. I'm going to edit this, um, the DJI mic bit. So from today's video, I'm going to turn that into a bit of a TikTok edit and see what we can get. There were some parts I missed, so I wonder if I might have to, like as I'm still working out and learning how to do this, maybe I'll record those bits tomorrow. Like there were things that I wanted to, or I thought would be really good to say after the fact. I mean, but is that me then, I know it's not ever going to be perfect, but is that me chasing perfectionism? Because you could always add, you could always update or change, couldn't you? And the goal is just to do things as I say. And if I really feel compelled to like updating something I said, then I need to figure out a way to do that that's entertaining for people. What you do? All right, well, I'm gonna call it a night in terms of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird time emotionally for me. Um, that sounds super emotional, doesn't it? I, what I mean by that is like, I just don't know, don't know which way to feel. I don't know if anyone does in this position. But the little man is doing well. Cool, so I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, was there one thing? No, no, we'll save that for tomorrow. I did have a cool thing, but it's, um, I'll just save it for tomorrow. All right, cool, later. Oh wait, what did you think of the DJI mic 2? Did the audio sound decent earlier? Did you, I don't know if you noticed any difference between that and a previous video.